Okay. Well, I'll call this meeting to order. Right. You want me to do it? Yeah, do real Okay. This meeting is being called to order today, July 10th, 2018, at 6.30, 8 p.m. This is the Planning and Zoning Commission. City Planner Rumor will start us off with the invocation or moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. So we'll do either a moment of silence and then pledge. Do a moment of silence. Okay, we'll start off with the roll call. Member Keller. Here. Member Wunderlich. Here. Member Bernstein. Here. Member Mellon. Here. Member Williams. Here. We have a quorum. We're moving on to elections for chair and vice chair. At this time, I'll open the floor for nominations for chairperson. I nominate Joel. Uh, Member Keller, do you accept this nomination? I do. Are there any other nominations? I will need someone to entertain a motion. I move that we elect uh, Joel Keller as chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission. I second. 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 All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes with uh, Member Keller as our new chairperson. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, now we need to have a vice chair. Yes. So uh, we'll open the floor for nominations for that. I nominate Roger. Uh, thank you, but I will decline. Mm-hmm. I nominate LeVon. Oh, thank you, and I guess I'll accept. <laughs> okay, we have a nomination. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, can I get a um, motion? Yeah, I'll second that. Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't hear a motion. Yeah, we need a motion to um, nominate. Yeah, you, you would just I, say I move to nominate. I, I nominate. We move that we elect um, LeVon as vice chairman. All right, I have a second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimously. Thank you very much. All right. That gets us to the old business, which is the consent agenda. Um, now, we uh, need a motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting on, from June 12th. Mr. Chair? Yes. I move, do you want to go? Yep. Okay. Yep. I move that we approve the minutes from the last meeting, which was June 12, 2018. Okay, I have a motion. Can I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried? Okay. That's all <coughs> we have under old business, so now we have the new business. First item under new business is the uh, Lee property, uh, 735 Center Street, and that will be Planner Jones. Yeah, first I'd like to just, um, uh, Mike Brewer and the City Planner, just welcome you all aboard. Thank you for your service. Looking forward to a nice run. Um, we gave you a nice action-packed agenda today. Yes, I will note that item number letter E, we are uh, 
asking to be continued to a date certain. This is the second time we're asking it to be continued. We're, we're just uh, trying to tweak some drainage issues before we bring this forward. We will, because this is the second time we're asking to be continued, we will re-advertise this particular project in the West Orange Times. We will also send out new 300 foot notices uh, indicating the planning and zoning in the city commission date. I just want to make you aware of that when you get down to that item. We'll just ask you to continue it. Yeah, uh, there won't be a public hearing yes. on that item. Right. Um, again, we've, we've got a uh, couple of really nice items for you to hear. Um, we're ready to be here as long as it takes. Ask questions. We're going to kind of go through and explain what some of these cases are. Uh, the the large-scale comp, comp plan amendment is a big item. Uh, it's the first one that we've had since I've been here in 13 years. Uh, so we will kind of instruct what, what you're kind of reviewing, what type of motion, ordinance, or annexation, rezoning. So we'll kind of set that up for you. So with that, I introduce uh, Planner Dwayne Jones. Dwayne Jones, Planner 1 for the City of Wakoa. The project we're going to talk about is called Ozzy Annexation and Rezoning. The property is located at 735 Center Street. The case number is AX061761 and the result. South side of Center Street, about 450 feet um, east of Orange Avenue or north of Silver Star Road. This property is seeking annexation. This property is seeking annexation to obtain water connection that is available at the front of the property. At this time, as you can see, this is an earlier 2018 aerial of the property. So it's vacant, but now it's currently under um, construction under, under Orange County. Um, and since it's under construction under Orange County, okay. Okay, there. So since the property is building under Orange County, it changes the process of how we do things. Um, the city won't be able to take this project to city commission until we receive a certificate of completion from Orange County. Once we receive that certificate certificate of completion from Orange County with the approval of the Planning and Zoning Board, then we can take it to the city commission for final approval. How we normally do annexations, this is kind of unique. We don't get too many of these, but our normal residential annexation and rezoning, so typical what we're doing now, we take it to the Planning and Zoning Board once it gets approved or if it gets approved by the Planning and Zoning Board, it goes straight to the City Commission that following month. So the difference between this one is just a longer process. with the surrounding areas. Most of the homes around there are R1A zonings. And that lot is pretty a nice size lot if it, it complies with the R1A zoning. And also the future lane uses is low, low density residential which complies with the R1 single family zoning. And once this property is um, annexed to the city, it will receive city water and trash service as well as police and fire assistance. Are there any questions at this time? Even though the certificate of occupancy of completion is pending, we can still make a recommendation this evening. Is that correct? Right. Thank you. Any questions? All right. Um, so at this point, what we'll do is we will. So there, there will be two motions: mm -hmm. one for annexation and one for rezoning. Mm -hmm. All right. And do we, have we have to open a public yes. hearing for that. So. Uh, Invite the applicant to the podium, okay. and then we'll open the, the applicants right. here as well. All right. We'll so uh, add we'll some additional, or if you have any questions for him, they'll be happy to answer. 
Do you have any uh, questions or you want to come up or? Come yeah, on up to the, the podium. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Omar Ali. Uh, our address is 735 Center Street, Okoye. And uh, we appreciate uh, you considering us for annexation and rezoning. Thank you so much. All right. uh, at this time, we have no questions. Uh, we just appreciate the opportunity to be a part of the city. All right, thank you. Yeah. All right, with that, we'll open the uh, public hearing. Um, so uh, open it up for the rezoning and carry on any of the comments into the annexation as well. So at this time, uh, anybody have any questions? Any? Seeing none, we will close the public hearing and we will bring it back to the dais. Are there any questions from anyone on the dais? Okay. Seeing no questions, we'll need a motion um, I believe we need to annex first, if I remember correctly. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Planning and Zoning Commission, acting as the, loaning, uh, as the local planning agency, recommend approval of the annexation of 735 Center Street, Project AX 061761. All right, I have a motion. Do we have a second? I second that motion. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the annexation, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimous. And now we will need a um, motion for the rezoning as well. So, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the rezoning number RZ170602 um, as presented by staff. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. All right, we have a second. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is a motion to uh, recommend approval, is that correct? Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. All right, so we will, uh, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries unanimous. Congratulations, welcome to the city if the uh, commissioner approves you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to our second order of business. We uh, have the Top Gun, 651 South Bluford Road. Uh, again, Planner One uh, Jones, your backup. This project is called Top Gun Chair Rezoning. The property is located at 651 South Bluford Avenue. The case number is RZ180406. So this is strictly a rezoning, no annexation is needed for this project. Mm -hmm. The property is located on the west side of um, Bluford, South Bluford, and south from um, West Columbia Street. The property lot size is 4.5 acres. It's currently vacant. Um, the city's requested rezoning for this property is I-1 zoning. And the future land use map, which is this next slide right here, is light industrial, which conforms to an I-1 zoning. Um, a little historical background on this property. Um, this property used to be a truck road for Florida Rock Industrial um, a couple years ago, and it was zoned for I-2. However, the issue with that um, the I-2 zoning, it conflicts with the future land use of light industrial. So for example, if you have a property that's in the I-2 zoning, you will want the future land use to be heavy industrial. The same thing for a commercial zoning, you will want the future land use to be commercial. So that's the issue with this property right now, is conflict, conflicting with the future land use. Um, so in this case, by changing the zoning to I-1, it will conform to the future land use of light industrial. And also another reason why we're changing rezoning it to I-1 is because we want to limit our, keep the heavy industrial uses away from the residential areas because it can become a safety hazard. So that's another reason why we're zoning to I-1. Are there any questions at this time? Mr. Chair, I do have a question. I'm, I'm looking at the zoning map, and just this is just out of curiosity. I see that, am I understanding that, that a portion of it is already I-1? And yeah, a portion may be, we don't have a legal description of that oh, area. Okay. It, may, it might be a tweak with GIS, so okay. it, it may be partially I-1. 
but the bulk of it's IFU. Yes, okay. good catch. Any other questions? All right. Um, so I guess let's introduce the applicant. Invite the applicant to come up. Say anything. Oh, no, no, nothing on the app. Okay. Um, so then what we'll do is we will open the public hearing. Um, anyone have any questions? Hearing none, we will close the public hearing and bring it back to the dais. Any additional, any questions or anything? Okay. Hearing none, we will uh, recognize uh, any motion. Mr. Chairman, I uh, move that the Planning and Zoning Commission, acting as the local planning agency, recommend approval for the rezoning of 651 South Blueford Avenue as presented. Project number RZ180406. Is there a second? A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, carries unanimous. All right, and that gets us to number three, the Greens at Forest Lake, uh, public uh, city planner rumor. Mike, we'll turn it over to you there, sir. Yes. Thank you. The <coughs> project before you is a, it's the Greens at Forest Lake PUD. So it's a, it's a proposed plan unit development. The item is first, it's a large scale comprehensive plan amendment, followed by rezoning to plan unit development. We rezone PUDs to a land use plan, and I'll discuss more of that later. The property is located adjacent to the 429. This is on the north side of the city. Uh, this is West Road, the, the on-ramps to the 429. There is a charter school developed here in the last couple of years on, the, on a parcel uh, to the west. You have a uh, apartment community, 240, 242 units. There's a vacant lot. You have the public shopping center. So this is, uh, there's a remnant road here that's also called West Road. Um, we, we approached Orange County about maybe changing this name of this road at some point and they told us fill out an application and send in $800 and they'll, they'll think about it so we'll, we'll go back at it later on uh, but this is a, a, a property that consists of 29 uh, acres a little over 29 acres uh, back when, uh, when these parcels were coming in the you can see here in the aerial the charter school and the apartments the, the road ended at this segment right here. And part of this plan unit development, um, we required connection of the road to the eastern terminus at the trail to provide future access to the, uh, these parcels. And is, you can see how this is the part. This parcel has a weird shape. There's a separate five acre piece uh, that is not a part of this application. That property owner is in attendance. But you can see this parcel wraps around and connects in this this point I can't really zoom in but it's you've got the West Orange Trail you've got this five acre that has a corner you've got this piece which has about 30 foot and then you have another piece this is a remnant piece from the property on the other side before the 429 cut through and they all kind of converge right here and at this 50 foot right of way of West Road Minor I guess you'd call it um, you have the West Orange Trail that runs on the east, on the west side of this property. And the West Orange Trail was the main selling point of this multifamily uh, development, which has uh, leased out and is very popular. So we have this parcel here that's over 29 acres. It has an existing land use in our future land use map of low density residential. The city of Ocoee does not have an agricultural land use in our comprehensive plan. So in our 20 year vision and our vision, we didn't see agriculture. So there's not an agricultural land use. Low density residential uh, is what was placed on it um, back when before it was annexed in. And then as it annexed in, it just came into the city. That, low dent that, res that land use affords up to four dwelling units an acre. The proposal by the applicant is to do a 200 unit townhome development, which exceeds the four units an acre. In order to allow that, you've got to change the land use on the property. Uh, 
this this is the current zoning map for some reason our our industrial zoning it was just purple didn't show up on the piece on this PUD but this parcel the subject parcel and the parcel just west of it the five acres is the, the parcel of the, the five acres is in the county still this is in the city it has a agricultural uh, zoning behind it to the north is the golf course and then you have the winter garden reclaim uh, aeration fields then of course you have the 429 Let's see what this one that's the proposal let me go back to the land use map it, the process in the state of Florida in order to amend the land use is if you're doing less than 10 acres of land and the land's not contiguous to another small piece that's going through a land use change it's a it's it's a process like a rezoning you just adopt an ordinance at the end of the year you let the state know we changed the land use on uh, 60 acres 30 acres 15 acres if it's more than 10 acres it goes through a large scale transmittal that gets reviewed by the state and state agencies and surrounding jurisdictions because everyone kind of has plans that they know that this area kind of low density and so we're giving them the opportunity to see if there's any level of service impacts. Uh, DOT or the Express Bay want, might want to see, you know, are you putting a regional mall there? Would it impact the 429? What is the land use? Uh, when you transmit a large scale submittal, uh, so the, the, the next step from here would be a first reading of the ordinance to rezone it to PUD. I'll discuss that PUD in a second. Then it is to transmit it to the state. We transmit this package to the state showing this is the proposed use, land use, this is the level, existing level of services. The proposed use, the benefit we do is we, we're, we also send the PUD so they know exactly how many units. They know, then they can say this development will or will not impact the level of service for police, fire, recreation, school, transportation. And if it is, how it's gonna be mitigated, we'll cover all of those items tonight. The state has 90 days to review it and send back what's called an ORC report, an objection, a recommendation, or conditions. If they send back an objection, then we have to work with the applicant to answer those objections, bring it back to you guys and say, we got an objection, this is what it is, this is how we're gonna handle it. Or if it's a recommendation or a condition, you just keep going forward and you can apply their recommendations or conditions. Some municipalities um, just send the land use amendment by itself. And what that does for the state is they look at highest and best use. So the first element is a large scale comprehensive plan amendment from low density residential to medium density residential. Medium density allows from four units up to eight units. Our third residential land use is high density, which goes from eight to 16. Some places it's 24, some places 30. Uh, we do have some overlays that you can get a bonus if you do certain things and get above 16. They are asking to go to medium density, four to eight, and they're not achieving the eight dwelling units an acre. So what we're gonna send is this large scale transmittal to say this 29 acres is gonna go, but it's not up to eight, because we've also got this nice PUD which limits it to 200 units, which limits it to six something dwelling units an acre. So they're just tested on that in the state review. <clears throat> Second part is the rezoning the PUD. In our land development code, we have zoning designations like R1A, which would require a 75 foot width, lot size, minimum lot size, minimum house size, it has setbacks uh, the, let me see what I here. <clears throat> or if you have a project that doesn't nearly f necessarily fit in one of your zonings, like we have an R3 that you could do some townhomes, you do a plan unit development where you look at the surroundings, you come up with your own setbacks, buffers, you kind of you, you mold the project where it works. So we will the way you tie that land to the rezoning, so it's PUD, if you go in the land development code, you're not gonna see PUD with any requirements. The requirements are the PD land use plan, an associated development agreement. It'll talk about lot size, how number of lots. 
So you're seeing a PD plan, and in some jurisdictions, a PD plan might be a bubble. They might just say 200 units of medium density, and this is the excess, and that's all you see. We generally instruct people, show a little bit more to get this project sold. Don't leave anything left to the interpretation, um, because there's always some sort of surrounding issue you want to just know what's going on. So what you're seeing with this PD land use plan is an extension of the road. They'll have to work with the Orange County Trail Department to get the connection across the road. And then they have uh, the layout of the townhomes. They got their best guess doing some engineering on where their stormwater ponds are, what size stormwater ponds they'll need. And we've looked at everything from open space, parking, off-site parking, not, not involved with the units. Uh, we've looked at some uh, park space. We looked at how it interacts with the trail and the 429. Another bit of information, there is a state requirement passed in 2011 called the Wakaiva Parkway and Protection Act. And in that, they had the Wakaiva Protection Area, which is primarily in the Seminole County and East Orange County area, but they also have the Wakaiva Study Area. And that requirement, that statute, put a requirement on properties in the Apopka, Orange County, Orlando, Winter Garden, Windermere, that they um, basically they say that the, the water percolates in the soil. There's many, there's a number of limestone features and it all goes to the Wakaiva River at some point. May surface may go to Lake Apopka, but they put requirements on that. that re one of the requirements is you have to have 35% open space, which is above a normal jurisdiction's minimum requirement of open space between 20 to 30%. What the city of Ocoee adopted and worked with the state in order to comply with the law is we got approved that only 35% of those there's five different criteria in the Wakaiva study area. It's A soils, those sandy white soils, sugar sands. It's karst features, if you have sinkhole type activity under the ground, if you have limestone or if you have uh, certain types of sand pines, if you have certain type of trees. This property has a lot of the A soils. Uh, so what we got approved was just for those indicators, so when they do a a property survey and a soil test, if, if it's all A soils or if it all has that habitat, you have to have 35% of the whole property. But if only a portion of it does, then that portion has to have 35% open space. This one had a lot, mostly A soils, so it is it achieves 35% open space. So off the bat, by Florida law, they had to provide more open space than a normal project. So that's why you can kind of see why did they, why are they limited? Why aren't they trying to get the eight dwelling units an acre, which most developers were? Where well, they're kind of constrained by state law off the, uh, to start with. So we're complying with that requirement. And that's one of the things when we send it to the state, they're gonna look to say, okay, you're in the Wakaiva study area. This is what ACOE adopted, are you meeting it? So we shouldn't have any issues there. The PD land use plan, as I said, runs with the property and designates the requirements. The next steps after this, which will come to you, is a preliminary subdivision plan, which is a public hearing, and probably a final subdivision plan, which they will merge together. The plan is for 200 townhomes. They are all two-car garage. Um, the builders here and can expand upon the, the type of units. The um, just showing you the survey of the property, and I think that's it. So what we're doing tonight is, in your packet, I provided a, a synopsis of they kind of went over level of service. So they provided a transportation study by, they hired a professional. The city has a consultant on staff that reviews transportation studies. We see that there's not a level of service issue with the roads out there. The roads are not failing by level of service. There, we saw some operational issues at, potential operational issues from what we know at this, this intersection because these trips and all of these trips primarily use this intersection. There's not a signal. Um, 
if they triggered a failure in a road segment, if the road was at operation and they triggered it as a failing road, they would have to mitigate that somehow. They did not trip that threshold. So what we're looking at, we know there's these trips provide a peak AM, people going to work, taking their kids to school. That coincides with this school having a peak AM and a PM. So we're looking at how this property, the existing PUD, which has requirements, and some of the things the initial commercial had to do at this intersection, how we're gonna provide for future signalization. The roads in the area, West Road is a county maintained road. Obviously the 429 is a state road expressway authority <coughs> and Ocoyapopka is also a county maintained road. We look at traffic going down to some of the other intersections upstream and downstream. We have some issues presently at Fuller's Cross and Ocoyapopka Road, but though that intersection has been uh, uh, it's under design now. The city and the county are working on uh, put, adding turn lanes. We had a project that's, that paid $250,000 towards an improvement at Fuller's Cross. So we could not make this project help that, situ that intersection because that intersection is technically fixed because we have a project, we have funding for it. So they passed the level of service for transportation. The level of service for schools, you'll see in your packet, they, they did not pass for elementary school and middle school. Most developments in Ocoee fail, all of them fail middle school. We only have one middle school in Ocoee, it's overcrowded. Um, later on, I can kind of give you background on what, what the school at the end, we kind of go over some project and updates. But all the projects failed some number of students. We have an interlocal agreement with the school board that we cannot adopt a rezoning or a comp plan amendment without the applicant having what's a capa an agreement, either a capacity enhancement or a concurrency agreement. We can move forward, keep them going until we get to that commission date and say, okay, you have to have the agreement that has to go to the school board and get approved. They are working with the school board and the school board will also receive this large-scale submittal. They're one of the state, they're one of the agencies that received this for review. So we don't have the answer on what it takes to mitigate it. They're working that with the school. They'll have to do some prepayment of impact fees, create some student desk, but it's just a process. It's a financial process for them. But it, there's certainly no reason to deny a development at this point because of overcrowding. And I'll touch on this later on, on some of the school issues. Level of service for police and fire, we meet the level of service in the zones. There was a fourth fire station in the public's plaza. They, um, they meet police and fire for response time. This wasn't an, a, a, a use that's way out in the middle of nowhere. We have to figure out now how we're gonna get another zone. Do we need police officers? This fits within our program. Water and sewer capacity. This is in the Orange County's service area. We, we have a line, a service agreement where they provide, we have a service boundary where we provide. This is not in our service area. This is a use that doesn't generate a lot of water and sewer use. They've worked with Orange County. Orange County will get this project under review. When you submit a large scale, it goes to the surrounding jurisdictions. So they've worked with Orange County and they, they indicate there's no, there's capacity for water and sewer on this. Parks, the city has a level of service for parks and uh, just a, what we kind of use, we have the, the city parks that you may have frequented. We also count some of the golf course, which is a city owned property. And we have a property called the Rogers property, which is, has a couple of design for parks. We have enough park space for the residents that we have and the future residents in our comprehensive plan. And this does not hinder that. So we're gonna show the state that by changing this land use, bringing a higher intensity, we're not gonna negatively impact, this project does not negatively impact the level of service. I think I'm done. If I haven't bored you, if you have any questions, the applicant is here, they have a great team 
uh, landscape architect, planner, they've got engineers, they've got, yes, there you go. They always sit together, threw me off. So, and then we, we do have a resident that lives adjacent that I think might want to speak as well. So, with that, I'll entertain any questions. <coughs> this will be a motion for comp plan, rezoning, and then we'll say the land use plan. And what do we mean by that? The land use plan is not a public hearing item. It's all encompassed in this um, case tonight. And what you're approving is that kind of what you see that layout, the, the access points. I do want to uh, say one thing that I, before I go. We, we have this strip down here that I talked about. They're proposing to dedicate this 30-foot strip, which enables us to get closer. You need a minimum of 50 foot for a right-of-way. The West Road remnant is 50 foot. They're going to dedicate this 30-foot strip so as this piece comes in the future or this piece, we can get the 50 foot and we can provide a secondary access. But for construction purposes, it will be somewhat stabilized, so we could get an emergency vehicle through here if need be, if you were to say have an accident and that the trail was closed. So we are <coughs> providing an emer a second emergency access, not a full public access until we can get future right away. But they are dedicating it, they're deeding it to the city. It'll be city land and we can start working from there. So. All right, questions from anyone on the on the board there. Mr. Rumor, uh, any motions on this uh, this evening? Do they need to acknowledge or accommodate the school capacity enhancement denial? No, they do not. They just have to work towards that before. That'll be a comment, probably a comment that comes back from the state Department of Education. Very if good. they. Um, but we will, um, at the City Commission Transmittal hearing, we'll provide evidence. We got an email here in the past couple of days on the movement of that, that process. Um, but it is not imperative today to have that all hammered out Thank just you. before we do an adoption. So, and we typically will take them to Planning and Zoning Commission. A lot of times we'll take them to first reading of the ordinances. That's not a public hearing adoption. We'll take them the first reading and then we'll stop. And then they typically, they might have a school board meeting the next week and then we bring them back to another commission meeting and do the second reading approval. So. Thank you. Did I? Yes, I have, I have a, a couple of questions. First of all, thank you so much for your presentation because I had like 10 questions <laughs> and you, um, you answered a lot of them, so thank you. But I, I do have a question about the West Road spur, yes. the two spur there, spur roads yes. there. Who maintains those? Did you say who it's Orange them? County? So Orange County yes. maintains that portion yes. as well. Orange County okay. owns and maintains this. This remnant piece is owned by the Expressway Authority. Okay. And then these are individual property owners. Okay. And then I also wanted to make sure I, I did understand what you said about why not go with the medium um, density. The 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 reason why we're going with PUD is because we can limit to 200 units. Well, under the, they're proposing to go to a medium density, which allows up to eight dwelling units an acre. Okay. We could give it a zoning. We have an R3 that allows duplex. Our R3 zoning is really not conducive to townhome lots. A townhome lot, you own the land, you know, but your neighbor structure is attached to your structure. Our R3 is really set up for apartments or duplex, but not a townhome development. So that you'll see they, they come in as a planned unit development. And in that planned unit development, we'll, we'll give all of the setbacks, building setbacks, porch, pool, number of parking spaces required, height, all of the, so you wanna find out what the zoning means, we'll send you the plan and it has all the information on it. Okay, um, that was, oh, one more question, I'm sorry. Are they, because that's a, the, the existing apartments up there, they're a, a PD, PUD as well, So right? this came in so are as, they, is it all one? Or this came separate? in as one um, commercial, uh, uh, this came in as one PUD, it had a light industrial land use, mm -hmm. all of this property here. To the west, where the, this is a commercial PUD called Fountains West, 
and it has a number of lots. And this is lot eight. This just came to the last Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, this is lot eight of the Fountains West PUD. So it has its own requirements, permitted uses. This came in as the Arbors PUD under light industrial. Okay. Under light industrial, under the zoning category and the land use, you can do commercial and residential. In the commercial land use, you can do residential. Our comp plan says in the light industrial and the commercial, some forms of medium to high density are appropriate under certain market conditions. So under this light industrial, they came in and they got apartments. They provided a market analysis. And so we had, uh, under mixed use, we had, initially we had this sort of mixed use light industrial where you had a high density living and you had commercial expectation here. And then came in a request to amend to allow a charter school. It, um, uh, I think it, it went through two different types of hearings. And okay. so you ended up with this kind of, it, even though it's a light industrial, you have apartments in a school, it's kind of weird. But under our light industrial, you can do commercial and residential, so. Okay, I just was a little confused. I thought yes. that they were all right. one No, PUD. so this will be one PUD. So mm -hmm. what's gonna happen is this project will be one PUD. This parcel's left out mm -hmm. as of right now. So if, if things go, this would be a separate PUD. This would come in. It may be able to develop under a straight zoning, under a straight commercial, straight light industrial, something, um, or it may need to come in as a PD because it's five acres. You might want to try to squeeze in some more use, but we give and take. Okay. Or it may get it gobbled up at some point, and then we would bring it in. Let's say they were to acquire this piece. If they were to acquire it and want to get units on it, we would amend the greens at Forest Lake PUD to include five acres, to include the, the PD plan. Mm -hmm. uh, now with that five acres, we don't have to send it to the state for review because it's under 10 acres. It's just a more of a process. We just, at the end of the year, say, we change the land use on this five acres. Okay. Thank you very much. Additional questions? Okay, I've got a, a few there, Mike. Um, First one that comes to mind is with the parking, I noticed that the, um, the rec building, the building where they're gonna have any, uh, where I would assume you would have HOA meetings and all that, there's, I don't know what, five, six spots there. You can make it around the corner, you got probably another five, six. If you've got 209 homes and people come out for a homeowner meeting, um, is there gonna be enough parking in that area? Or is that gonna, especially since that seems to be the main entrance at this point, um, is that gonna be a traffic problem on meeting nights? And I don't, yeah. I don't know that we've actually got enough parking for people to park there. But we would anticipate, uh, hope that most people would not drive knowing what the parking situation is. But this townhome development actually provides more additional on-street parking than any of the other townhomes we have. You can see, and that's something we're working with them, you'll see when it comes back for the subdivision plan, is these are gonna be public roads, and they're proposing to have a lot of on-street parking to provide additional parking along these roads, where in our, besides our downtown Bluford, we don't really have uh, a lot of public roads with parking on, mm -hmm. and how much of the parking stall is in the 50-foot right. right away, and does it, does it work? So to answer your question, there's not a lot of parking um, around the main uh, sort of amenity. It, it's not a building. We went away from requiring buildings. We do pavilions now. Because, you know, as the Kensington um, Manor, they have s such a small building, and they have to maintain and ensure yeah. a, a, a miniature house that fits 10 people. Yeah. Um, so we do pavilions. Uh, to make it easier and people can flow and not, not be burdened by walls and windows so, so they can fit in there. But no, we, we never look at that aspect of if they were to have one meeting a month or a year, do they, do they need to have adequate parking? We look overall in the development, is there opportunities for guests? These are, these are all two-car garage, yeah. so they can technically park four cars, two in the driveway, two in the garage, you know most use their garage for storage. So, but we have an adequate supply of additional parking uh, in, in the development, but not around the um, amenity. All right, and then there, because I could see where that'll 
be, I mean, if I'm in the back of that development, I'm driving my car. <laughs> I drive my car to the meeting. I'm not, I'm not walking. I hate to say that, but I have a hunch that's what most people are going to do. So that that be sort of an aside concern. Um, okay. Keep in mind. Um, because the police will hear about it later. But hey, there's people parking in front of my driveway. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, well, you also got to think about, do you want people parking there? Well, I mean, it's a, yeah. to use the trail. It doesn't right. need to become a trail. Yeah, because you got to have your trail right there, yeah. too, which is going to be, a, which is also a, a, an issue, like you said. Um, the other th question I had, and only because one of the, I guess one of the slides sort of confused me, with the industrial area to the, um, the side there where the armor is. There isn't any of that left open, is there? Is it's it, all developed. Okay, that's what I thought because it looked like on one of the slides that there was a, a piece that was still no, undeveloped what you're seeing, there. This and is, that was why. This is uh, the Yeah, track, this is what yeah. I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, yes. That's okay. the second half of the school, the field, the, the driveway, the parking. Yeah. Um, this is a stormwater pond. This is a, I mean, this is, our aerials are not up to up to date. This is now Wendy's, this is now Taco Bell. Yeah. If you haven't been out there for a while. Um, and then another question I had, um, this is more, for, I guess, for the people um, along the golf course. And I just wasn't sure of the fencing. Is that fencing going to be enough to keep golf balls from hitting their house? From hitting the house? <laughs> the, well, <laughs> yeah. um, I, I just not, you know. Typically what you find on golf course communities, they require a wrought iron fence. They don't want the houses to have all of these fences. And yeah. that's what we did with, uh, on just to the east, the Forest Lake yeah. uh, subdivision. It's wrought iron, that's a view. That's that's prime property. So, all right, I, yeah. no, no, and there'll be two stories. <laughs> It'll, yeah, yeah. If I'm out there, look out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was just thinking the same thing myself. I could just see yes. and get somebody's was, window. Yes. Yeah, um, let's see. Um, I think most of the other items you covered. Um, all right, I don't have any other questions. Let's invite the applicant up. Oh, and, but so for you, just to go back, the golf course is fully aware of this proposed development, and they've actually got some cool ideas. They will be reaching out to the applicant if they and their broker if they already already not have, um, about, because they need rounds. They get a lot of rounds, but. They want to incorporate this development into the golf course somehow mm -hmm. to, to be able to get sell more golf rounds. So there, we've met with them twice, the golf course, on what this development means and is there any opportunities. So, okay. Right. And you, uh, yes, I actually have two questions, kind of piggybacking off your fences. Um, the F dot fence along the 429 um, is that like a cast in place, 12 foot? That's already there. Yeah, we we can't. T I'm sorry. My name is Tom Daly. I'm with Daly Design Group at 913 North Pennsylvania Avenue. I'm the applicant and I'm here on behalf of Meritage Homes, who is the builder. The fence, you, you, that's the DOT fence. Right, we, I was wondering if it was like the big concrete sound barrier. Yeah. No, it, not, there's a, um, and I'll get a little bit further into it, but there's a, a significant buffer okay. that's part of the PUD and part of our desire to, to pull uh, homes away from the, the uh, expressway. Yes, the, uh, those sound buffers are put in by DOD or the Expressway Authority. Um, they will tell you they will not put them in, as we saw with the apartments on McGuire. They will not come back and put sound wall wherever you approve residential. They don't follow it. I just want to make sure money. it was there. I don't know if it, it was there. It's not. not there, and it will not be put there until sometime in the future as things get more urban, they might come through another phase, but. Yeah. The last I had heard from, because uh, we've gone through this before, as Mike had said, and the last I heard on that was if it was pre-existing, they put in the in the wall. If it wasn't pre-existing, you can put it in at $3 million a, <laughs> for, I think it's a mile or something like that. Or, so it's, it's, it's sort of an expensive uh, thing if you want to put it in yourself. And you had a second question? Or? No, they actually covered it. They were kind okay. of a question. I have a question, Joe. All right. um, Mike, could you just give me a little bit more information about the, the traffic service level? So is a C versus a D versus an E? The, I don't have the traffic study as part of the packet. 
but uh, you what you do is you have a say for instance um, I think of a road is at a level of service of 14,000 cars or 20,000 cars if that's the maximum load you'll adopt a a uh, a level of service at 20,000 cars that will be a level D okay. 25,000 would be a level E okay. um, so based off that level is how many trips are on that road okay. Thank uh, you. for instance in this area a lot of people say we want to get a Wawa on a Koyapopka and West well mm -hmm. Wawa needs 50,000 trips and West Road is 15,000 a Koyapopka is 24 okay. it's not there yet and so the level of service will be for these roads is higher than what the current average daily traffic count is. You can go on the property appraiser's website and under the map, the county puts yearly traffic counts on there. You can see on the segment of road what that count is. Thank you. But and later on, we'll talk about providing you with some information and in that, you'll the information will provide you all the data for resources. You'll be able to see what those road level of services are. <coughs> And uh, welcome, welcome back. Uh, we'll uh, <laughs> we'll uh, ask if you have anything else you'd like to add on this. No, Mike, Mike did such a great job of, of walking you through it. I had a little presentation, but uh, I don't want to necessarily waste your time with it. Except that, you know, the location of this property being against the 429, against apartments, doesn't really warrant a, sub, a normal single family subdivision. And so when Meritage Homes looked at purchasing this, they evaluated single family homes, but it seemed that this was, the townhome concept was a much better fit given commercial apartments, expressway, and yet we still got the golf course, like you, like you said. So that's why we're here is, you know, to, to kind of further that. Um, the plan that you're looking at right now um, has 200 homes. They're all fee simple, meaning they're all purchased. This is not a rental community. Um, the, like Mike said, the, um, the density is a maximum of eight units per acre, but the zoning plan and everything else caps it at below that. And so by approving and adopting this, the two, the 6.89 units per acre runs with the entitlements of the land. So we feel very comfortable with the maximum of 200 units. We've done a lot of engineering studies on it, but until you get to that final engineering, you might end up with 198. You might, you know, you might end up with 200. The plan you're looking at is, is 200. Like Mike said, the, um, we have a big open space area in the center of it. It's, it's a dead orange grove. That's what the property is. So, um, but, so the big dry pond in the middle is designed so that it gives a lot of open space in the center of the property. People do go down and, and use it for soccer balls and stuff like that in the, in the drier seasons. This time of year, you probably couldn't. But the sands are really good there, so we expect it to drain very quickly. But that's why we designed it that way, so that there was a big open space portion. And then we put the park, our, our recreation area, next to the trail, because obviously that's a real draw for, for us and for the residents that live in this community. Relative to the parking commissioner, the um, like Mike said, we got two you know adequate parking for visitors and for the residents. Everybody lives about no more than 800 feet or so away from that park. So whether people would want to drive their car and park in a community spot, or whether they just want to walk on down, it's it's well within walking distance with with within a community like this. Um, the um, the, pro the homes themselves are going to be anywhere from uh, 1,700 square feet to 2,000 square feet. That's a big town home, mm -hmm. you know, it's all, all two-story. Pricing is going to be starting in about the mid-200s. So this is, this is definitely a, you know, this is not a, um, a lower price community. Meritage uh, is a national home builder. I don't know if you know much about them, but uh, they do develop, they sell homes nationwide. And they have a big footprint here in, in Central Florida. There's a lot of communities that Meritage is working on now, and so this is this is one that they they um, looked at and and said, you know, this is where we want to be. You know, we've got the Publix, like you said, we've got some of the uh, we got the charter school right there.
got access to the expressway. It, it's a it's a good property for for this kind of development. Um, so, you know, like I said, the the, um, the plan development zoning is really kind of a key on these kind of uh, applications because the the improvements and the requirements are so much more than a straight zoning. The open space, the buffering, we do have a 75 foot buffer that runs along the expressway authority. There's some existing trees there we intend to save and supplement planting also. The fence we gotta keep because it's not ours, it's DOT's. And you know, if you drive there coming south, it's kind of at grade when you're on the north end and then the, the ramp comes up. So down in that lower portion, the ramp coming off of the expressway, you know, is, is probably 10 or feet, so feet higher than the property itself. But as you get to that northeast corner, that's where the, the road is kind of at that existing grade. So when, you, when we come back and you start looking at, you know, the subdivision plans, we're gonna have to address for ourselves more than code, the, the proper buffering and how, how thick the kind of vegetation we're gonna use you know, whether native pines and cedars or, you know, what, what would best make this a nice community and not impacted by the expressway authority itself. So with that, I'll, I'm here to really answer any questions that you might have. Um, I have uh, Dave Glunt and Nick uh, Everly, Everly uh, both with Meritage Homes, both civil engineers. So <laughs> if you had any engineering questions on it too, but you know, we're here to, uh, you know, be an asset to the, the, to the city. And we think that this location, the uh, the builder, the type of product that they put out will be an asset. Thank so let you. me just tag on to that. He said, you know, when they get through with engineering, they may lose a lot. They cannot gain more than 200. If they were, uh, if they were to lose a lot, they would not have to amend the PUD because the PUD allows up to 200 units. If they found some way, hey, we could gain three or four lots, that's a major amendment, which comes back through this process. Um, so you, you have two ways to amend a PD, a, a non-substantial, if, if you're changing just some of the makeup, but it's not intensity, it's not access, or you have a substantial. When you increase intensity, you change access points, it goes through a full rezoning process. So you may see it at the subdivision plan, it may have 200 lots, it may have 198, 199, but it won't have more than 200. All right, thank you. Um, any other additional comment, uh, questions for the um, applicant before I open it to the public hearing? Yeah, is this gonna be um, a gated community? Just out of curiosity. No, it's not. It's gonna be public city streets. And then my next question is, is this uh, like wood on masonry construction? Just, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, I think ground floor is masonry with um, wood on the second floor. Just, just out of curiosity, just the back of my head, only because it peaked it after you had said it, because I had, um, I, I guess I knew that the trail was there, but uh, thinking after we had some of the discussion here, I'm, I'm wondering, do you want the play area, or the, the activity area in the front, because how many people are you gonna get off the trail who are gonna come into your property? Well, you know, <laughs> you're right, you're right. And, there, and there, there's, there's gonna be, you know, more than likely that the park itself, well, the pool, of course, is gonna be gated and locked. I mean, that just has to be. Um, any playground equipment or anything like that is probably going to have to be posted that it's HOA and more than likely be fenced also just because of that conflict, you're right, because you got the general public right there. They might want to just stop and sit in the shade and play on our playground. So, and that's common throughout the trail. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that, that yeah. Is. And let me just add on to the, the question about the roads. You may have been in uh, some townhome developments when they're gated and private roads. A lot of times what they'll do is they'll make those roads less than 50 feet. They actually go the pavement up to the um, curb and, and, you, they, and, and you have a, a thinner road section and you always have all these cars that can't park on the side of the road. They're going to a public road. So in order to be a public road, it has to meet the public road standard. 50 foot, higher constructible, more cost. So. That shows some more of the value in the subdivision. They're not trying to jam in units and make the road smaller and because they're gonna be private, they're public. We're not gonna accept them unless they meet our criteria. So. All right. All right, I'm gonna open the public hearing. I notice here in the, um, in the minutes it says, uh, 
uh, to ask for the speakers to please give your name, address, and you have three minutes. On the speaker reservation form, it says five minutes, so I'm going to go with five. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to make a difference or not for you, but uh, and I hope I don't massacre your name there, but Malka Isaac. Okay. Come on up and we open the public hearing. <coughs> Yeah, that one right there. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Malka Isaac. I'm the owner of the five acres that were shown to you that are not included in this plan. I live in Lutz, Florida, across the street from Tampa, Florida. And I have owned the property for about 20 years and have waited for something to happen for the right time to, to develop it. I did not know anything about what was going on until I received the notice of hearing in the mail last week. And I'm, I don't understand a lot of the things that were said here today. In principle, I support that project. I'm glad to see that something is finally happening to the area. And I would like myself to do something so that I can also develop my property. I had offered to the applicants today to see if they want to acquire my property or join me in so we can do something together. As I told you, I did not know about it until a few days ago. What I want to make sure is that I'm not locked in because there is a problem with traffic after the school and I do not know where the roads go and I would like the north part of my property to be on the edge of the road that is in the plan. So I have access to that road. So when I do something with the property, I can, I have, there is ingress and ingress. Also, there is the possibility I mentioned to the developers that I could give part of my southern part of the property so the west road can be developed there and there is another exit or access to the property. So I am asking you to protect my rights as far as not being blocked in so I will be able in the future either to join with the applicant or whatever I will be allowed to do. I want to mention to you, I'm not in the city of Okoi. I'm in the county, I'm in uh, Orange County, and I have not yet asked to join the city because frankly, as long as nothing was going on, the real estate taxes were cheaper on, mm -hmm. on uh, the property and, uh, and there was no reason to pay more taxes when nothing was happening. Right now it is on the agricultural and I appreciate you listening to me. Thank you very much. Yes, to kind of answer some of your questions. Yeah. Certainly you're not seeing with this PD, but we took that into mind. This was a landlocked piece of property. I mean, it has an edge touching here. This is was one you know large piece of property. So we required the road to come in and connect right on that north side and that road will connect and provide a public road on the north side, so she'll have access now to a public road. If she was to dedicate land, it doesn't necessarily, if she dedicated 20 foot, that would give you the 50, but it doesn't necessarily line up correctly, so I think we can take a look at it. We might need a little bit from this property on the south. This property on the south is in play. Mm -hmm. uh, you will be receiving this later on in the year as another large-scale comp plan submittal. I told you we had none in 13 plus years and I've got two <laughs> so far for you guys. So so this property is potentially in play, but uh, uh, we, uh, we did, we will provide access to her property uh, via public road here and we're trying to get one on the south side in the future. Her land is zoned agriculture <coughs> right now mm -hmm. and so is the land um, the subject property and what that means is they're allowed one dwelling unit per acre they're changing it to allow up to eight dwelling units an acre um, and mm -hmm. so 
if you annex into the city, you can keep an agricultural zoning. You can keep the agricultural exemption if you meet the qualifications under the property appraiser. There's nothing to do with the city. So. Having been a sort of excess, as I said earlier, I do support this petition. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else uh, wish to speak? Hearing no one else, we'll close the public hearing and we'll bring that back. There are two, no two motions we're going to need. First one is the uh, comp plan amendment. We need to approve that. And then once we've done that, then we'll need to approve a rezoning. And then the land use plan third. And then, no, okay. No. And you have a copy of the land use plan, the full land use plan in your pocket. Um, I do believe it is attached. Yeah, so I didn't, my slides, I didn't show every page, but you did yeah. receive that. Yep, yeah, we do have the attached to the, the back of the packet there. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the comprehensive plan. So Mr. Chairman, I will make the motion that uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission, acting as the local planning agency, recommend approval of the large-scale comprehensive plan amendment from low-density residential to medium-density residential for the Greens at Lake Forest PUD Project number CPA-2018-005. All right, we have a motion. Is there a second? A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor of the comprehensive plan, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carries. All right. Uh, now we need a second motion, uh, and that is going to be for the rezoning. So, Mr. Chair, I move that we, as the Planning and Zoning Commission, acting, are we acting in the LPA capacity here as well? Recommend approval of the rezoning application moving from low density, no, I'm sorry, moving to P PUD from low density residential, it's medium density right. residential and rezoning to PUD yeah. uh, land, land use plan. Wait, this is confusing. <laughs> it's a rezoning to plan unit development. Okay, there we go. Uh, Number RZ180305. All right, and can I have a second? A second. All right, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, carries unanimous. And then we need a third the land use plan. Yes. Uh, yes. So we need a motion for the land use plan. All right. The first two items are adopted via ordinance and by statute and by city code. Those are public hearings. The land use plan adoption is not done by ordinance. So you just, uh, it's another motion, but it's not done by ordinance. So it doesn't have to have its own public hearing discussion with it. So mm -hmm. Um, let's see, only because I don't know that they, I don't know that there's anything on that that says, okay. use the parcel? Yeah, I would just use the parcel. Okay, you could probably just use the parcel. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, I move that we recommend approval of the land use plan for the Greens at Forest Lake Plan Unit Development Parcel 0522-28000-00-016 and adjacent properties as well. All right, there is a motion. Can we have a second? A second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Carries unanimous. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Moves us on to the ARIA Independent Living Preliminary Final Large Scale Site Plan. Yes, another first <laughs> for, my, for myself, and so you guys will have it he easy from here on out. Uh, this is a preliminary and final site plan. So you're seeing the proposed plan and the civil engineering plans. What happens after this step is it goes to the city commission, it gets approved. We meet with them, they construct. Those are construction documents. 
There is a process where you can do preliminary and then you can do final later on. They combine them together. This is a preliminary. This is not approved by an ordinance. It's just a process in our land development code that requires a public hearing for the preliminary plan. Property is located on Roberson Road and east of Windermere Road. We also call it Tommen Boulevard. Tommen starts somewhere around here. Um, the, the parcels on the north side of Roberson Road. The uh, aerial, um, there's a, used to be another portion that did a lot split off to the side. It was one large rectangular area. We have an approved site plan I'll discuss here in a little bit on the property next door, which is about to break ground, and then this parcel is coming in as well. There is a significant wetland between the parcel and the subdivision to the east. This is owned, this is part of the subdivision property. It's conservation. Um, there is water and sewer to the north, and there's water and sewer in this subdivision. They will be running the water and sewer, one of these projects, around, actually around and tying it in. And we will have what we call the Southwest Loop. This is within our utility service boundary. On the other side of the road is Orange County, and on the west side is City of Winter Garden, who I'm sure is willing to provide water to somebody. <laughs> but we're getting it. Um, just a note, there is a plan. There is being drawn a plan to put a roundabout at this intersection. The City of Winter Garden and the county um, have partnered to do this roundabout, and the, the the city who's going to drive that construction process has agreed to include a portion of this utility line running in their work. So they're going to help us out and allow us to do, they're going to do the work and there it'll be, part of it will be there right away. Part of it is our right away. Mr. Rumer, do you know when the projected uh, construction of that roundabout would be? I do not. It's getting closer, but I will check back with our engineers that are working with them and get a date and I'll email Thank you. Um, the, uh, this intersection really took off when uh, Winter Garden Village went in. Um, a lot of cars go that way. Actually, I went that way today. Um, we have some development going in. If you've been in the area, uh, this is a parcel that has a dog daycare that's under construction right now. And then we have an assisted living facility that's approved here called Legacy. It initially came in a while ago under All Sports. It, it ended up, the All Sports ended up moving up to this parcel as inspiration, or parcel north of that as inspiration. And we received a site plan approval for a assisted living facility on this parcel. What that means, it's memory care, an assisted living facility. Residents need care, constant care. Um, and they will be housed in that unit. This piece is coming in as an independent living facility. What that means is it's 55 or older. It's kind of that aging in place concept. So if, if by chance you um, had to put a spouse in this facility, you could live next door. Or if you're kind of getting near, you want to live here, you can live here. And then as, a, as somebody needs more care, they can move next door. But this is a, a multifamily development and it's they free to come and go. That's 55 or older. Um, the applicants are here and can discuss more on that. The zoning is low density residential, and <coughs> you're, the we have a large we have a 200,000 square foot ALF and a 200,000 square foot. Uh, independent living facility and it's kind of like how's that on low density residential well we've went back on another project and looked at what the trend is for determining density on an alf because you live there but it's not a normal living you're not coming and going you're not producing children you're not using the same facility and it kind of equaled out to about seven units per one residential unit and so we're able to fit all of this on a on a residentially zoned lot. We didn't have to change the land use to medium or high density. So the zoning is R1. I don't know if I put the zone. Yeah, it is the zoning back. I think that's it. The zoning is R1 and the land use is low density residential. Um, 
the said this is a preliminary and final site plan. You can see shaded in, you can see the footprint of the approved assisted living facility next door. They will <coughs> use a joint driveway access and they will use a joint stormwater pond. We had anticipated at this point the ALF would be under construction, but they're still working with us on this utility and they'll probably may both break ground at the same time or near each other. But they're going to be used joint stormwater pond, joint access. There's a large wetland along Roberson Road. The section will not be touched and it'll actually have a buffer around it. And they don't have any other wetlands on this property other than here. There's a wetlands associated next next to it. Um, this is a project which is requesting a waiver from height. Under the residential zoning, it has a height limitation of 35 feet. Under commercial zoning, you can go 45 feet. They're proposing a waiver to go higher under the code. If um, they were not in this process, they would, it might, you might have heard of a variance for height, but under a site plan, we bring it as full forward as a waiver request. And that waiver request there, um, justifying you can see the units with regards to you, they may have provided me a diagram I didn't include in here where they're going to they might have one but it's the the dif distance of the wetlands the height of the trees still do, will block that unit from the most <coughs> adjacent residential unit they will not see that and it's tucked behind this wetland as well so we've got a preliminary final plan access this is parking there's a pool uh, in um, outdoor area a, a walking area here sort of their little on-site recreation amenity open uh, usable open space the units look like sort of like normal um, apartment rental and that was a sticking point for me initially but as you look in the building plans which I've seen they're not a part of this package is this facility uh, maybe yeah, this might be a first floor there's a lot of open common area in the first floor kitchens seating area so it's not all units it's really only getting out of all of that 145 units um, within that building and so the area of I'm trying to find the best picture for it this this drop-off area there's a, a big this is a good this is a lot of common space it's not units so they're not it's not maxed out on units, and they're one and two bedroom units. They're not three bedroom, and they can expand upon their, their how these facilities operate. This is the first one I've reviewed before. So with that, I'll entertain any questions. They don't have to be tested for schools as being 55 or over. <laughs> we'll put a development agreement together which says this has to be 55 or older in, in some language so it doesn't ever transfer that, become um, a regular apartment community but as you can see with the overall development this will be an aging place it'll be nice um, one of the benefits I see to this 55 year older is you'll have residents with disposable income that will need to go eat and use libraries or whatever but so that I'll entertain any questions any question mr. chair I have a question um, looking at this um, well, it's really a grading plan. I'm looking at, I'm trying to see what number it is. GR1. My question is, and going back to something that you said, my question is, I couldn't quite figure out, um, with there being a lot of common area, are they accessing, is there only access in and out of their unit through the common areas and out the main door? Or will they be able to have, or are they having, will they have individual access to it? Okay. I'll, I'll let them expand upon it. But, but I, the way this building's being built, it's actually going to be built into, it's going to be three separate buildings 
built okay. together. So they'll have multiple access points. Okay. They need it with the type of construction, the type of use, the distance, there's a requirement, building code on how many and the type of um, access, exit. Right, that's what I was concerned about is whether they would have enough time in the case of an emergency <laughs> to get out. <laughs> That's, that's not only building code, but it's also an FBA fire code. Yes, okay. there's, there's. Okay, that, that was, that was the only question. And they'll, they'll expand upon that when they get to it. Go ahead. Uh, FEMA, the FEMA flood map, 100 year. How does this relate? Being yeah. so close to the wetlands. Yeah. So, uh, in the city of Ocoa, we don't allow development in wetlands or floodplains, and you have to put a buffer from the wetland and a buffer from the FEMA floodplain. So there's no development. Uh, from time to time, we do allow development. If it has a little finger, they can compensate. When you develop in floodplain, the problem with that is you've got to compensate. You've got to dig another hole on the property bigger than the one you're filling in. But we don't, there, there is no wetland or floodplain impacts here. So good question. Thank you. Any other questions? I had just one, because uh, you answered most of my other questions there that I already had. But um, when I look at the shape and you, and you show that uh, that rectangle there, it looks like it's going to be into part of the conservation. Are they actually going to be in part of that conservation area, or, or is that yeah. building going to take a, a funny yeah, curve? There's, the there's a buffer around it. They're not impacting. OK. Yeah. This, this is. Um, But yeah, there's no impact to wet. Um, if, if they were impacting wetlands, they would, we would, uh, it would have to be for, if generally if they're gonna extend a road or a water line, yeah. you might, might, might allow them then say, okay, you can scooch over some for, to make your building fit. They would have to mitigate through St. John's okay. on a wetland. On floodplain, they would have to provide more pond space mm -hmm. to compensate. All right, so uh, let's invite up the applicant there and let you get yes. to say hey and uh, give us any information you might want before we open the public hearing. Hi, David Stokes, Madden Warren Stokes, 431 East Horatio Avenue, Maitland, Florida. Uh, I'm the civil engineer on the project. Uh, the applicant's uh, representative and uh, development consultants are here as well. Uh, if needed for any questions you guys may have. Um, first of all, welcome to being a planning board member. Uh, first night, you guys are doing a good job. Um, sidebar, your staff is, is amazing. Um, they're leading you this process. You're doing a really good job. I work in a lot of municipalities, and you don't always encounter that, so you guys have good staff to lead you down the right path. Uh, Mike has done such a good job. There's really not much for me to say in addition to what he's done. Um, so. I'm here to ask, answer any questions you may have that he hasn't already. And I'm looking at a page, uh, VA1, and I, it's a page where we show we require, you'll see this VA1, it shows truck and fire truck access on how they're gonna move around, but it also kind of shows better, if you look on that south side where the wetland is and, and the building, they're a good distance away okay. from that. The closest corner of the building to the single family is about 450 feet, roughly through pretty dense wetland. Uh, so that's our justification for the height, is the extreme distance to the single family. And our parking is buffered to the uh, proposed ALF next door, and the, sh the short extensions of the building are the ones that protrude easterly uh, in that same direction, so. Um, the the ALF sense. use really generates a low traffic impact, as does this use. Uh, a regular single family home generates about nine trips a day. This is less than half of that. So even though you have a lot of building on, if you look at both buildings, but it's really a really low traffic generator. All right. Any questions for the applicant? All right. Hearing none, we'll open the public hearing. May I? May I? Uh, out of curiosity, what type of uh, features, furnishings, facilities, amenities uh, do you have that make it qualify for a 55 or over? I have lost track over the years of what's involved with that. Uh, great question. Uh, Ian, uh, 
will come up. He knows more about the building interior than I do. And Thank I don't you. want to misspeak and lead you to the wrong answer. Hi, Ian McCook, 451 Boynton Road, Maitland, Florida. Um, I brought with us a, uh, a plan that shows the, uh, uh, the area of our amenity in the ground floor space so that you can take a look at it. Uh, these buildings are programmed much heavily than a typical multiple, multiple family project uh, in that we've got uh, a minor amount of food service space, club rooms, there is a wellness center that includes fitness, it includes a uh, spa, it includes uh, rooms for medical to come in and uh, doctor's offices to come in and, and utilize that space as well as uh, hair cutting and that type of thing on the amenity as you'll see on the, on the, on the ground floor in that area. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Schumer. Thank you very much. Okay. This isn't assisted living, this is just 55 and plus. Right. Independent. Yeah. All right. And even even uh, it's, it's kind of tough, there's a lot of acronyms out there, ACLF, ALF. It's the assisted living facility, they don't necessarily need 24 hour nurse care, like a nursing home where they're IV, you know, giving them IV and meds. A lot of this is memory care, they just cannot they'll get lost, so they, they help, you know, they have meals for them and, and on the other side of the property, which is an ALF. Is, so it's not gonna be nurse intense. Each room doesn't have a nurse assigned to it. Um, and this, again, 55 or older, you just have to meet the age qualification. All right, so uh, assuming no other question on the diet, so we're gonna open the public hearing. Seeing nothing, we are going to close the public hearing and bring it back. To this one, we only need one motion. <laughs> yes. There's a, there's, a, there's a smaller. This one, we just need a motion to approve the preliminary final large scale site plan. So we will entertain a motion. So, Mr. Chair, I move that we recommend approval of the preliminary and final site plan for ARIA, um, parcel number 312228. Zero five. All right. We have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, motion carries unanimous. All right. Thank you very much. And that brings us down to the Decole Boulevard, which uh, we will be continuing. Yes. I don't need to open the public hearing. Don't need to open it again. Mention that we will continue it until August 14th yes. planning and zoning meeting. And whether it makes that meeting or not, we will re-advertise all the way through the, the legal ad, the, the public hearing sign will stay on the property and we'll send a notice to every property that touches within 300 feet. Right. And we, we obtained that 300 foot notice from the property appraisers. You put a buffer around it and it gives you all the addresses. So. All right. Um, miscellaneous items there. The project status report. Uh, yeah, this is where I'll kind of bring you up to speed as these projects move forward. You can ask me any questions about what you see around town. Um, and just, uh, during this time, just wanted to kind of give you a quick overview of the school situation. Uh, as you, you'll see a lot of times the projects will fail middle school and elementary school. The school board owns a site on Ingram Road, which we approved the special exception for a middle school. They have a sign out there that says school coming. There is no school in the five-year plan. They've even talked about even doing a elementary school and middle school on that site. Still no plans. There's another school in the area uh, at Crown Point by the high school, across from the high school. They have 15 acres for uh, elementary school there. That school is not in their construction plan. They also have in the area on Arden, on a future Clark Road extension where the development Arden Park, they had to reserve 15 plus acres for a future school site. That commitment will come to fruition soon. The school board will have to decide whether they wanna purchase the site for an elementary school. And then lastly, we had a uh, redesign of Spring Lake Elementary, which is kinda in the area. When you do zoning, you can blend areas. 
when you do a land use, they're, they limit it more. Um, but we had a, a redo of Spring Lake Elementary, and we had a new school, Hackney Prairie Elementary, constructed. The Hackney, Element, Hackney Prairie Elementary was supposed to be a relief school to the Clarecona Elementary School. So when they finished Hackney Prairie and they finished Spring Lake, they decided to close the Clarecona School. So the relief school became the school. So we have an issue with elementary schools. There's land out there that they own and they have, we have issues with middle school, they have the land. We asked back in the day to even do a K through eight. We were told they didn't do K through eight, so then they, Shortly thereafter, approved a couple of K through eight. So we work with the school board. They, they, we work with them. We have a good relationship. But there are plans. They have land. There is opportunities for future schools to help with that issue. Our high school is under population, and they ship some of those students to Wakiva. That would go to Akoi. Um, we have other students that would fill up Akoi High School, and they go to West Orange, and they go to Olympia. They have different schools. So. They have their way of doing things. So, so it's the land's there. You own it. You have the two. You have those elementary school sites. Yeah, I was gonna say back when I first got on the commission, we approved the Ingram School. Yes. <laughs> so that that actually has an approved school yes. on it that they have it built. That's right. what 12, 13 years ago. Yes. Thirteen. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, so it's your time to ask any questions. I just wanted to real quick. And Dwayne did a great job. I just kind of want to show you one thing with annexations. Uh, one of the big criteria in order for a prop, so you know what, what is the criteria to annex, they have to be adjacent to the city on one side. And so this property is adjacent on two sides. Um, it could be adjacent across the river. It could be a, a lake across a road. As long as it has zoning in the city, a city property abutting it or adjacent. That's the mi minimum criteria for annexation. Also, you know that they can also, like, say, for instance, that if you're not eligible to annex, you're not adjacent to a property, you can still receive city water. If you need water yeah. connection, you'll just have to do an initial zoning yeah. type of application. Yeah. And then once that property becomes eligible, you have to annex to the city. Yes, yeah, so we have a number of so properties, still, like, say, in this area, that don't abut the city but we have water in front of them, so we'll provide them water service. We'll just ask you to sign an agreement that you'll agree to annex at such time as you're adjacent. And if you don't, <laughs> we'll turn your water off. <laughs> so, um, and so, and Duane will be bringing some annexations over here shortly that we've, we've updated our map. And we have a lot of properties that have asked to annex and they just happen to be located next to somebody that said they would and they're receiving water, so we're gonna start bringing those properties in um, to the city. And they'll start paying taxes to the city in perpetuity. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> uh, any questions? You got some development out there? Great job. We, we gave you a tough, tough uh, assignment today. I think Roger yes, sir. a question for you there. Where the Colony Plaza used yes. to be. What is that going to be? Okay. The Colony Plaza is on the corner of McGuire, and Highway 50, it's on the southwest corner. There's a portion right on the hard corner, it was an old gas station that is owned by a developer, uh, Mr. Boyd. He's not the commissioner, he's a developer, he's doing a lot of Horizons West. He initially came in to develop that hard corner into two retail, 14,000 square foot retail spots. We have an overlay that's it's in a specific area called our community redevelopment area. And we actually put an overlay on those properties above code that kind of requires more stringent urban development patterns. He came in, we said, he initially came in, wanted to put a Walgreens. We said, no, you gotta put a building up on the road. And we've got a plan with two 14,000 square foot buildings. And we just met with them today on a construction and they're gonna be breaking ground on that. But what also came out of that development is the property behind it, which housed the old Colony Plaza. That property, as you know, we demolished in 2006 or seven, shortly after I started. And we put a lien on it because we, we demolished it. We spent the money, a good chunk of money, 800,000 plus minus, plus legal fees. And plus that property had code violations from unruly grass, from a lot of things. So it had liens 
One was a sort of a construction for the demolition, the other code enforcement liens. That developer said, hey, I'll partner with the property owner who has no plans to do anything with it and try to develop the rest of it along with mine. He's a developer. So a number of years and, and working as we came, the city commission and the community redevelopment agency board approved an agreement to allow him the right to develop the rest of the property. He needed some of that property in order to do his development on the hard corner. He needed an L shape. So initially we were going in, how can we release the liens? What can he pay to release the liens so he can use that piece? Then he came back and said, hey, I'm willing to, on my own, I'll scrape it. So you're seeing it, it looks like it's all being developed. Part of the agreement is he's cleaning the rest of it up. And what that means is there's a lot of parking spaces, landscape islands, tennis courts, well, septic, building pads that are hard to maintain. So he scraped it all. What you're going to see is just these two 14,000 square foot buildings on the corner go up. And under a, pay, a, prepay, a repayment of liens, the property is now clear to be developed. And he's got a plan, and he's going to go and try to develop it all. But again, you're only going to see two buildings, 14,000 square foot. They've probably got eight units in them. I've heard from, I've heard Tijuana Flats is going in there. Um, he's tight-lipped, but he's also working on behind it so but we do not have the plan on the hard corner is a small site plan the, the buildings uh, size the future plan you'll see as a preliminary site plan you'll see it so when it comes through you're gonna know he may have pads he may have lots uh, I don't know we did adopt under that agreement sort of a concept plan that he could kind of market which has some buildings along McGuire Road, along Highway 50. Um, so, yeah, because he, yeah, because he was originally talking about restaurants in there, a bar yes. in there, uh, yes. some Health Central. I mean, uh, excuse me, yes. Orlando Health was going to have Orlando Health Urgent Care, and it took so long they moved across the road. It's now they and it became small. <laughs> it's called Care Spot yep. by Orlando oh. Health. So it is. It, yeah. Yes. So yeah, they did. They did have an impressive plan that they were yes. in their original plan when they came through on it. Okay. Thank you. There's a on on Franklin Avenue or Franklin Street, north side, uh, about a quarter mile east of 429. A year and a half ago, we uh, recommended approval of uh, development Coe Village. there, and it's uh, yeah, that was the name. Thank you. I was trying to remember, and it seemed like an interesting project, and it's trees. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. That I actually have the final revision on my desk to review. So what happened with that project was, at the property line going to Franklin Street, there was actually expressway authority land and Department of Transportation land. Mm. It extended. It was called a. The oh, agreement we tried to work. Yeah. With, uh, it was yeah. not a remnant, it a, but it's a, a access. Yeah, there was. It was an act. It was called access something, and and limited access, and so that could limit a driveway going into the property. You would not have a driveway, but it also there was a drainage easement. You'll see a hole there. So we we just finally got worked out. We initially asked to have the expressway authority, the DOT right of way. So that's Silver Star Road. That's a state road. But there was this piece of expressway authority land from their pond, this finger that went. We asked the expressway authority to give it to us. We'll put a water and sewer lines in there, it's public. They said, no, we can't do that. And Dana was working with the yeah. attorney. And then they came back and said, yes, you can do it. <laughs> and then we started to go through the motion. They said, no, you cannot do it. <laughs> All of that has worked out. Um, and in that time, some adjustments. We have the final plan. No, it's still the four buildings. And hopefully, we'll be signing off on staff for construction soon. Thank you very it much. It has not gone away. I hope some of these developers are acquainted with places like Einstein's Bagels and oh, yeah, love that. Panera <laughs> and so forth. I hit that. When I go to the Orlando airport, I hit the Einstein's. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Any, anything else? Well, I'm going to add just one thing, and I think it's just because we just changed it, but the note on the bottom of the agenda, uh, we probably want to change the time from 7 p.m. to 6.30. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Other than that, 
Um, unless there's anything else for the good of the business, we'll uh, call the meeting closed. Thank you all. Well chaired. Thank you. Well, well vice chair. <laughs>